show us what to do and say. In the power of your presence, strength and courage will increase. In the wisdom of your guidance is the path that leads to peace. Amen. Amen. Bishop, who has been with me all these years as a friend and as a mentor, Bishop Nathan Baxter and his wife beside him, who has been a minister of hospitality in the relationship to this very significant ministry. I'm happy to have the privilege to be with you. It was not too difficult to manage to get here today. Yesterday, I tried to get to the church from my house in New York, and train number one and two and three were all shut down. But in the course of time, I made it through, and here I am, and uh, looking forward to the time we share together here today. Um, let me say that I mentioned to the newspaper um, person that I um, consider myself a part of a special and Bishop Baxter knows about. It happens to be that some of us who had Pentecostal backgrounds were spread around to mainline churches, and we like to think of ourselves sort of as an incendiary effect <laughs> of the church. And may the fires of the Spirit burn brightly in our hearts as we tabernacle together. <laughs> face the situation where our new resolve 
Beyond January, I want to go back to the Yuletide season. There was a flash of insight from that Christmas story that I think we would do well to reflect upon and to react to. It is regretful that we are able to celebrate a season, a grand and glorious season. could mobilize us for a serious season of advocacy for societal transformation. It comes from the account in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, where there is a description of what happened at the birth of Jesus. I want to read beginning at verse 8. shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, peace among those with whom God is pleased. Now, from this text, I must acknowledge that for all the years I've been hearing that story, until just celebration of Christmas this year, I never paid attention to the deep meaning of what the angel of the Lord said to the shepherds. The angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. So they experienced something of Rudolf Otto's uh, idea of the Holy, the Mysterium Truth. Jacob discovers oh, that, that awful night as he's about to make his journey that the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. There are times when God's presence is palpable, frightening, and it's, and it's mysterious, trembling, vibrating, overshadowing presence. And the angel said, do not be afraid. I know you in the presence of that magnificent glory of the creator of the ends of the earth, but don't be scared. Relax a little bit. And this is why. For see, see, the, 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 they said, for see, reminds me of how we begin our sermons, hoping that we can see. Open my eyes that I might see. Glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes. Illumine me, Spirit divine. It is my 
my wish that as we talk and think together, that we will be able to see something so significant that instead of generalized efforts to bring about changes in the world, we will be given a very clear, definite, compelling assignment to begin to be activists all over again with a serious longing to see the fulfillment of that to which we have been called and appointed. Then she said, but see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. This suggesting good news for the common good. Just think of that. What kind of news could be good news for the common good? In our culture, the common good does not have very many advocates. <laughs> it is the particularity of my interest, my my group, my class, my denomination, my religion that really gets most of the acquisitive energy. But this angel claimed that he was going to be bringing them good news for all the people, good news for the common good. Please, even as I continue to talk, think about what kind of news would it be that would be good news In other words, I want to announce that, that an absolutely new age has arrived. Mm -hmm. The fulfillment of the hopes of generations. An age of deliverance. An age of healing. An age of hope. An age of justice, compassion, and peace. In other words, it's, it's because the very cosmos itself is going to be altered so that alienation and isolation will be overcome by an inclusive gathering of all of the children of God or of the whole of creation, human and non-human. And everything that of life, body, mind, spirit, emotions, relationships, uh, economic well-being, environmental embedded interests will be good news. All of that was preliminary to what grabbed me. <laughs> the angel offers a sign that this new age has come. He said, and Professor Luke Jessen
Just come on up. Just come on up. Just help me. <laughs> Christology is so central to us that we miss the cosmology of what a messianic age ought to be. And with my Jewish friends, they say, if the Messiah has come, why is the world like it is? And that's a good, legitimate question to ask. If the angel has said, when this thing happens, it will bring good news for all the people. And, and, and they have to deal with the question about they are waiting. If the world is this bad, why has the Messiah not yet come? But, brothers and sisters of faith, suppose the angel was actually speaking the truth Jesus the Messiah was born. I raised this question. Isn't it likely that we have capitulated to 
the prevailing trends in our world such that we have relaxed any semblance even of disappointment that things are the way they are, or we have lost the hopefulness that because he came, not just that will be glory for me, not that he will just save my soul, but that, that the world has not yet received the good news, not for all the people. Yeah, yeah. And I want to say this, this the, the, the fact that the angel says it's a sign, maybe we didn't get the sign <laughs> that we have relaxed at least our disappointment that things are as they are. So let me go back to this text and take a closer look at the, at the signs, perhaps to discern what the sign seeks to convey regarding God's will and God's ways. So the first item on the sign, you shall find the baby. to us as a child. A child. What you see in that manger is a disclosing of in terms that you as human beings might be able to appreciate it. That's me under the, con well, we call it the incarnation, Emmanuel, God with us. In that, I am manifested in that child. You really want to know a lot about me. I'm pouring just about all there is of me into the form. God Almighty does not come in military might. God is not a kick butt deity. Oh, I'm sure to read the story of the God who acts, there has been some kicking of butt. <laughs> <laughs> That is not my primary mode of being in your midst. <laughs> in fact, the word given to Zerubbabel in Zechariah 4 6, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. I come to you in the spirit of infancy. Life. Unfolding, developing, needing to be cared for. God, God. Wow. The incarnation of new beginnings. Not as you suspect the Messiah to be. And Jesus could never throw it off that expectation. In, they said to me, in the beginning, God. And 
And I go back to say, what kind of God? And in the world today, suppose we stop to ask ourselves, how does God manifest God's self in our world? Where is God? Who is she? Where do you get verifiable evidence that God is there? The truth be known. This is an age of disappointment about the divine manifestation. And if you are not disappointed that God does not exercise more power, then, then maybe your theology is in flux. Mm. Even I am troubled about the incognito nature, the presence of God. I wish say, there, see, the truth is that there is no one who can, to the satisfaction of this technological scientific age, point even so much as to the existence of God. Oh, I know the arguments for the proof of the existence of God. But they all seem not quite to measure up to the scientific requirements that our age would suggest. If you don't want to see God, this logic is going to be because you discern God's presence in the sign. period of the death of God. And I would preach that night. And uh, after I got through preaching, and I had mentioned the death of God theology and what it might mean, there was a local gospel choir that had come. And almost as in rebuttal to me and I profess all time. <laughs> If God is dead, <laughs> what makes the flowers grow? Oh, they, they almost, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and I understood it. It was poetic. And it made its impact for me. But the point was, if we had sat the gospel choir down and asked them, now we appreciate the song, but where do you see God doing it like that so that there could be no question but that it was God that did it. The point I'm making is that we, we must acknowledge that, that, that the God premise is not something that is just obvious to everybody. That, that, that to say there is a God is a demanding task if you are required to give See that little baby there? That's just about as close as you're going to get. I'm in that child. Not only am I in that child, I'm in every child that manages to come down the birth canal. I'm in there too. Not just in that one you see, but in every child. Not simply the child. Of humans, but every offspring. Now, of course, yes, I've been speaking with panburgers. I am not into panatheism, but I'm glad for the word panatheism. There is that of God, Douglas Steer said to me. There is that of God in each. 
creature, the prophet of God. There, with, without ceasing to be the transcendent, though that is perceived by sight, there is in each one of you that of God which was in that child. So, we celebrate the holy child of the season. But our tender sentimentality about the Christ child is basically on the surface. But our deeper conviction is about a bully God who will get you if you don't conform. I will attest you out. Which of these two songs of the season through which we have passed is truest in regards to your conceptualization of the divine? First, you better watch out. You better watch out. You better watch out. I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town. He knows when you've been sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been good or bad. So be good for goodness sake. There is a God concept linked to Santa. Because we always take the secular to sort of let the divine piggyback on the secular culture. Even Christmas itself is piggybacking on a secular event. Or Unless you, in addition to letting God be God as a child in that manger, unless you become like little children, you, you, and me, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. In fact, I want to pause for spatial and anticipation. Whatever happened to the child? Did your God consciousness disappear with your outgrowing the child in you? Where is the laughter, the play, the imagination, the adventure, the innocence, the freedom, the Christmas morning sheer delight? It's not only honor me. Honoring me not only as I am in heaven, our Father who art in heaven, our Mother and Father who are in heaven, but you must honor me as I am in that child.
It says, I looked around the other day and saw how truly blessed this life mine has been. I have life, health, and comfort, peace, and joy within. Special care in times of desperation, a helping hand when friends are few. So I ask, dear God, what can I do to turn some thanks to you? I expect the mission impossible, a call to service far away. But instead, this gentle assignment God sends to us each day. Love my children, that's all I ask of you. Love my children, that's what we've got to do. If you love them as I love them, we shall see them safely through. Love yourself, love me too, and whatever else you do, love my children. That's because this shall be a sign to you. You shall find the baby, the baby, and I'm in there. And yet, the sign was more than that. It said, First of all, the, the temperature in the womb of a mother mm -hmm. is different than the temperature of a child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not only is that me in the cradle, but that's showing my love. Mm. That's who I am. Not just a child, I am love. And love wants to give more. Love reaches out to give comfort. Love seeks to protect. Love seeks to secure. Love seeks to guide toward that which will be greater abundance and life and love of yours. If you want to know who I am, this is a sign to you. I am love. And just to 
Your husband is such a gift. Oh my goodness. One of my sisters, when we were so poor in Goldsboro, North Carolina, how well do I remember that when she was born, there was no bassinet. So Mama pulled open the bureau drawer. Yep. Thank you. 
explain something. That's why I live in the tension between the partial fulfillment and the total. That's why I instituted the year of release. I can't stand it any longer. I, I watch this great disproportion as Walter Brueggemann speaks about it. The longer I can. I, I have to redistribute. I can't, I can't stand that maldistribution. Every seven years I gotta, I gotta, I gotta I gotta rearrange things else, else, I, else I, I wouldn't be able to keep watch over the cosmos because I'm worried about the ones who have languished in poverty and want and neglect. Year of release and jubilee, that's about making it possible for me to stand it a little bit longer. A world in which messianic promises have not yet been fulfilled. Okay. So anyway, to, because my time is getting to be like 12 o'clock, it's about the time we should end. Um, let me remind you of something. Do you not remember how Isaiah 58 says, you all think you know me? Y'all don't even know me. You think, is this the fast you think I'm asking for? No, to, 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 to let the, the one who has no place find a place to stay, even if it's one of yours. To give food for the hungry. Mm -hmm. To make sure that, that all of my children are at the table. This is why we say so much and people appreciate hearing me talk about my mama. So you told her that whenever you ate kids gathered around the table, before you could even prepare a plate, mama would ask, are all the children in? Mm -hmm. And if somebody were not present, we would have to prepare a plate for that one before we could fix our plate. And I think of God as Mama Eternal, who is always <laughs> asking of all the children. Mm -hmm. Jesus was a champion of the poor. The Beatitudes make that clear. His first sermon at home, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Matthew 25, I will summarize what it says. It says, nobody can go to heaven unless they have a letter of reference from the poor. Mm -hmm. Six wings, twain they covered their face, twain, King James Version, twain they covered their feet, and with twain they did fly. The wings are called flight. The reason they fear flying is if they had their wings like this and God wanted some child to rescue them, then they'd have to shake out their wings. But they didn't do that. They just kept hovering in the presence of God. We are only tailored to God, to feel God's heart, to feel God's care, to see God's concern, and we hover like says, there's a situation in this community where there's somebody that went to bed last night hungry. <laughs> so what are the implications? I just would read these and then I'll sit down. If what I have read is a discernment of the sign that the angel mentioned, then a special commitment for all of us is care for the vulnerable. Any legislation Subsistence necessities for all. We don't even think that way anymore in America. Entitlement going out the window. Fine, take entitlement, but remember that we are endowed by a creator. So you can have the endowment. You
You, you know you can have the entire thing. Just give me the entire thing. Yeah. <laughs> you just going to take the entire thing. But, 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 but it means that there should be a legislative child watch. Any legislation that is bad for children rises up. And revolution is likely to happen because churches have seen the baby. And they, the churches have seen them wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And you pass some legislation that's bad news for children. That's not good news for all people. And the churches begin to close up and find themselves filtering their way through the streets because no, uh, 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 no, 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 you doing this to God and you will not do this to my God. My God needs our care. Some of us sub-speciatic. That's racial ethnicity. And God's going God's to cry about that until the tears flood the coastlands of the nation. I think there must be a restoration of a more just distribution of wealth. We must have tax reform. We must have tax reform. We must Ha, ha, ha.